Hi all, welcome to section 2.1. This section is going to cover set concepts um, and a lot of definitions for you. The first definition is the term set. A set is a collection of objects. Uh, these can be called elements or members of the set. There are going to be three ways that you can describe a set. You can use a simple description you can use what's called roster form, or you can also use set builder notation. When you're doing a description, it is essentially just a verbal sentence describing the list of elements that you have. So for example, uh, write a description of the set containing the elements. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. If you had to write in one sentence what those elements were representing, you would probably say the months of the years, uh, the months of the year. So if you were going to give that in um, roster form, all you would say is the set is the months. of the year. And this would be your set in description form. That's it. I think these tend to be the easiest, um, but you do have to describe it in a sentence. Often it's uh, a little more condensed to write your set in roster form. Roster form is going to be written in what's called braces. And um, braces look like these little, I often call them curly brackets. Um, so you'll use the curly brackets and then you'll make a list of whatever your set is inside the curly brackets. So for example, if you had the number one comma two comma three in the braces, that would be the set one, two, three. Now it is important to use braces or curly brackets. You cannot use parentheses and you cannot use square brackets. Those will not be considered sets. So make sure you use the proper type of bracket. When you list your set in roster form, you often want to give it a name. And typically, they'll name it with a capital letter. Um, in this case, we're talking about the natural numbers. So capital N is usually used to represent the natural numbers. If you have a set that goes on and on forever, like the natural numbers do, they'll use an ellipsis at the end, which is just your dot, dot, dot that's going to be at the end. So if you ever decide to name your set, you call it a capital letter and then use your curly brackets and list the elements inside the curly brackets. Let's look at a quick example just to make sure we understand roster form. So say for example, I asked you um, to do the, express the following in roster form. Set B is the set of natural numbers less than or equal to 45. So notice they used a capital B to represent the name of the set. They've used the curly brackets or braces on each side because that's what you do when it's a roster form. And then they've listed the natural numbers. So your natural numbers are your counting numbers. One, two, three, four. And this person didn't want to list all 45 numbers, so they used the ellipsis in the middle, and that's totally fine. Um, usually it's acceptable to list a few numbers in the front and the final number at the end. The last way that you can represent a set is by using set builder notation. This is a very formal approach. Um, but it is used in upper level math courses, so um, you could see it again. So set builder is just a formal statement and it's going to describe the members of the set between braces again. So remember your braces are your curly looking brackets. 
and typically it's going to use a variable to represent the members of the set. They are going to use um, a new symbol. Um, it looks like an E is the easiest way I can describe it. Um, and you will, whenever you see that symbol, you are going to read it as is an element of. If they use that symbol and they put a slash through it, the slash always means not. So that would mean it is not an element of. So let me show you what that would look like when you go to try these problems. Okay, so let's say I gave you the following. Write set B equals one, two, three, four, five in set builder notation. Okay, so what they're hoping that you'll recognize is that these are natural numbers, they're your counting numbers, and specifically it's your counting numbers five and less. Um, so there's two different ways that you can write this. So the first thing you need to do is use your curly bracket, and we're going to use X to represent our numbers. So you always start set builder notation with an X and then a bar. And then you have to tell me what the number is a part of. Well, we're a part of the natural numbers. So you would say X is in the set of natural numbers. And then you have to give a description of what is going on. So one way you could say it is that X is um, the number five and smaller. So you could say X is less than or equal to five. Or there's a different way you could say it in set builder notation. You could start the same way, x bar, x is in the set of natural numbers. You could choose to not include the five. This first set says that x is less than or equal to five. You could just say that x is smaller than six. So that would be x is less than six. And in this case, the six is not included. So you would go all the way up to six, but not include it. Either answer is correct. So if you have a multiple choice question on homework or on the test, you have to kind of look for the difference um, or look for both options. If we look at example B, write in words how you would read set B in set builder notation. Okay, so if I was looking at this, in set builder notation, I would say x such that x is in the set of natural numbers and x is less than or equal to 5. That's how I would read that in words. One thing that's going to be important when you are developing sets, you need to make sure that the set is well defined. Um, if a set is well defined, that means its contents can be clearly determined. So let me show you something that is well defined, and then I'll show you something that's not. An example of something that's well defined, it would be the set of United States presidents. This is going to be well defined because you can clearly identify who all the U.S. presidents are and have been without question. Something that would not be well defined could include something where opinion would matter. So an example would be best pies. Make a list of all the best pies. Well, I really like apple pie. You may really like chocolate pie. Somebody else hates chocolate pie. How do we decide if it goes on the list? If it, if it includes opinion, it's not going to be well-defined. So well-defined has to be something, I'd hate to use the word historical, but verifiable is a better word. Another definition that will be used is the word finite. A finite set um, is a set that contains no elements or the number of elements is a natural number. 
Uh, I like to think of this as a set that can be counted. So a finite set has an ending. Um, it will stop. So an example of a finite set could be the set of natural, even natural numbers up to 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Notice you're able to count them. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. If you're able to count how many elements there are, that would be considered finite. If your set is not finite, it is considered infinite. So um, an infinite set is a set that would go on and on and on forever. So the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, they're going to continue on and never stop. That's going to be considered an infinite set. And typically when you list an infinite set, that's when you'll put your ellipsis at the end to show that it's going on and on and on forever. Another term is what's called equal sets. In order for two sets to be equal, they have to contain the exact same elements. And we'll just write that as set A equals set B with just a normal equal sign between them. So an example of something um, that would be equal would be the following. Um, set 1, 2, 3 and set 3, 1, 2. Notice that all the elements are the same. Both sets contain a 1, both sets contain a 2, and both sets contain a 3. Yeah, they're in a different order, but they contain the exact same elements. Those two sets would be considered equal. Cardinal number. The cardinal number of a set is going to be how many elements are actually in the set. And the way they're going to um, sh sh ask you for the cardinal number is they're going to ask, put an N and then the name of the set in parentheses. If you ever see that notation, that's just asking you how many elements are in the list. So for example, if I looked at set A, Set A has the numbers 1, 2, and 3. The cardinal number for set A would be, oh, sorry, I wrote that wrong. The cardinal number of set A would be 3. It's simply the number of elements you see. If you look at set B, set B lists England, Brazil, and Japan. Again, only three items are in the set so its cardinal number would also be three. That is going to be important if you are ever asked if two sets are equivalent. Two sets will be equivalent if and only if their cardinal numbers are equal. So if the cardinal number of set A and the cardinal number of set B are identical, then they are considered equivalent sets. So for example, if we look at set D, set D lists the terms A, B, C. So that means the cardinal number of set D is 3. If we look at set E, the cardinal number of set E is apple, orange, pear, 3. So the cardinal number of set E is also 3. Because the cardinal numbers are the same, then these two sets would be considered equivalent sets. Not equal, equivalent. They're not going to be considered equal because they have to have identical terms or members. And apple never appears, appears in set D. So they're not equal, they're equivalent. Um, so again, any sets that are equal are also equivalent, but not all sets that are equivalent are equal. So for example, it's the same problem we just discussed. D has three terms, A, B, C. E has three terms, 
apple orange pear so therefore that makes them equivalent but since a never appears in E and orange never appears in D and so on these sets are not equal sometimes you'll have a set that contains no elements at all this is called the empty set and it can also be called the null set there's two different ways to write this if you're using roster form you can simply put the curly braces and just leave the empty inside meaning there are no elements listed between the two braces you can also use the null set symbol which is just a circle with a slash through it which symbolizes there is nothing in the set okay so an example of an empty set would be the num the list all of the numbers that are in the alphabet well the alphabet doesn't have numbers so you would not be able to list anything which would be the empty set sometimes they will try to trick you um, and they will combine the two and they'll use the braces and then put the null set inside of the braces this is not con considered an empty set because if I asked you what the cardinal number was and I asked you to count how many elements were inside of those braces, you would have to count one element. So since it does have an element, it's not considered the empty set. Same thing if they stick the number zero in the braces for you. If I said how many elements are in there, there is one element in there, therefore this is not an empty set. Be careful, that is a little tricky. The last topic of this section is called the universal set. The universal set is going to be symbolized with a capital U and it is going to be a description of all of the elements for any specific discussion. So when the universal set is given, only the elements in the universal set may be considered when working with the problem. So for example, let's say that I told you that the universal set is defined as the numbers 1 through 10. Then only the natural numbers from 1 through 10 could be used. So if for some reason I really wanted to use the number 22, I would not be allowed to do that because it is not in the universal set. Okay, so this is a brief introduction to set concepts. Please email me if you have any questions.